Well, isn't this just special? Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> okay, we have got Sweet Baby One. <laughs> okay, Sweet Baby One on the lift. It's from a customer I did a CT70 on. I guess he likes these little guys. And this is a, uh, what is it? A C, bleh. I forgot now already. A CHF30, a 50. Jeez, what am I? I'm looking right at the damn number. CHF50, Honda, Metropolitan. Must be Italian. Yeah, um, it was dropped off by another person, a friend of the uh, customer who lives out of state. He comes down here periodically from the Northeast. Nice guy. And, you know, considering Northeastern people. And so basically, uh, I don't know exactly what the deal with it is. I reached out to him just a little while ago via text and said, hey, I need to know what you want and what's going on with this thing. I think he mentioned something about it just didn't run or been sitting for a while. Now I took a look at the tag, which I took off for privacy because this is a customer's rig. And um, the uh, expiration on the tag was from 2005. Now I may come across a reg in here, I don't know, but regardless, it's quite possible the way it looks and the way it smells, it smells moldy. Um, that this thing has been sitting for that long. So I do not know. Uh, I don't know anything about these, to be honest with you. It is a Honda, so it's got to be good quality. And uh, I found a service manual for it in about three seconds online, thanks to a scooter group. Uh, and, uh, you know, I wanted to um, say that the title of this video, Scooter Trash, <laughs> is actually a term of endearment. Uh, those folks I met on a group ride once, I was in a sidecar rig and hung out with some of the scooter folks and they called themselves Scooter Trash. I think they have a Facebook page, in fact, and a pretty big group. And again, it's a term of endearment. They're super nice people and I don't mean that in any uh, negative way whatsoever. Um, it's kind of like uh, uh, some an inside joke, I guess, and they, they embrace that, so. Anyway, I'm gonna put you in the stand and we'll figure out what's going on with this thing. I think it's probably just not running, so let's check the fuel. Uh, let's check everything. Where the hell you put gas in this thing? Ah, there you are. Yeah, that don't look too promising in there. Yikes. All right, well, first things first, um, it, it does spin, you know, freely. Uh, sort of, it's got good compression. Kickstart seems to work. There ain't no electric start on this that I can tell. I don't think at least. Uh, oh yeah, there is. I'm sorry. There is a push button start. Battery is deader than a doornail. Actually, maybe even deader. Um, I just glanced at the service manual and what it said was, um, <laughs> it said, good luck. No. <laughs> it said um, to access the carburetor and all this garbage in here, we got to take out this cargo box. And this is a really big operation to do, not. Take out that screw for the, this is actually a, um, a lock for the kickstand, you know, for the center stand. So I guess you can't knock it over some, or somebody can't knock it over, you know, if you have it parked at some bistro or so forth, or maybe a McDonald's or a Chick-fil-A. And uh, so you just take the screw out, four bolts, one, two, three, four, the seat stays attached to it and uh, that cargo box comes out. So. Let's go ahead and do that nonsense, and then we'll see what we got. Somebody's been in here. All. You know, that or just vibrated loose. Sorry for that shot on my armpit if you saw it. Oh, come on out of there, you. Jeez, my fat fingers are just not as adaptive as they used to be. Sorry for that, too. I'm sorry for everything. Now, folks, I've given people counseling on this before. This is a Honda. It's got JIS or Japanese industrial standard fasteners. You gotta use a vessel or a other JIS tool for it. Otherwise, you're gonna screw up the screws. Oh my God. Oh, 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 yikes. Watch the fingers. Geez, that was easy. Hmm. Oh, I see some problems already. I am going to uh, sniff around in here a little bit and then I'm gonna set the uh, camera up on the stand, probably on the lift itself here, and then we'll steer it down, steer it into here, into this abyss, 
and then uh, we'll show you what we find. I just want to sniff around, <laughs> sniff around a little bit first. A couple of things jump out at me. You can see that that spooch back there by the baterias, bateria rather. I think this uh, rubber carb connector here, um, like almost looks like a CT70, CT50, CT90, you know, style. But of course, it's liquid cooled. Got wada in it, which we got to check too. Here's the reservoir. It looks pretty good. Anyway. Um, I'm looking at that. I see the schmoo, like I said, on the battery. Overall, not too bad, but, um, you know, with that fuel, the way it looks in there, I'm, I'm thinking this thing's going to need a complete fuel system shotgun, probably a full service, and uh, I have no idea how to do that. So <laughs> we're going to have to look at the circus manual on that. Like I said, I don't really work on scooters. I'm really doing this as a favor to a customer because it is carbonated and I'll pretty much work on anything that's carbonated. So, um, all right. Uh, hmm. I'm going to yank the battery out. It's going to have to get replaced anyway. I can't do any testing on this thing without some sort of power power. So, um, I think what I'm going to end up doing is that battery is obviously shot. I'm not even going to try to put any power to it like a jumper pack. I'm just going to scoot down to <laughs> get it scoot down to uh, Baterias Plus and uh, go ahead and change that battery out, get it in here. And then um, we'll try the, uh, we'll try to crank it over and see what's going on after I check the, you know, the basic, the oil and stuff. I gotta see where we're at here. I don't wanna start tearing this down um, if it's, uh, you know, doesn't need to be torn down all the way. Obviously we gotta do something with that fuel tank, but you know, there are, I'm sure there's a fuel filter in line. So let's, let's at least see where we're at and see what it's doing. This uh, battery, tie down gizmo was off so somebody's obviously been in here playing with it probably jumper in it there's a little better shot of the schmoo from the battery um, you can see the uh, positive side is actually the main fuse block distribution block too so you unscrew you know that directly from the battery and then get it out of the way and then the battery comes out so let's go do that and then we'll come back Figure since uh, it ain't 900 degrees yet, maybe only 875, we'll just go ahead and go to Batarias Plus on the sidecar rig. No need to leave it. Got a new battery from Bataria Plus. We're gonna go ahead and just turn the ignition on and see what we got. Oh, look at that. Ha! Little son of a gun. Well, wonders never cease. Well, the headlight may only go on when the thing's running, so I don't know. Who cares at this point? I mean, I care, but, uh, you know, not terribly important. All right, well, I've been poking around in here and I looked at the wiring diagram and uh, the starter circuit um, has to talk to the ECM, which is back up in here. The main power relay is behind there too. I don't think that's a problem though, and I'll tell you why. Because we do have other power and I pulled a spark plug wire out, put it up here with a, with a extra spark plug that I have. And it's got great spark when you kick it. So it can't be an interlock problem. In other words, I don't have the kill switch off, you know, why it won't crank. So um, I'm thinking we'll start right there. We'll go into the switch itself because nine out of 10 times is a bad connection at this switch that causes these problems. And, you know, it's exposed to all the crap, rain, junk, whatever. Um, I can't really get it. I tried testing the wires at that plug right there to determine whether or not I got continuity or any connection. And I, I can't really tell. I mean, I get some reaction with an ohmmeter, 
not really pulling it to ground. Seems like a very high impedance on this, which also leads me to believe it might be a switch problem. So um, set you back up on the stand and we'll go ahead and crack this off and see what the switch looks like. We can, I'm hoping I can get at both sides of the wire where it exits the switch and we'll just check for continuity, make sure the switch is closing. Oh, those are tight. All right, hang on, I gotta swing this out of the way. Oh boy. Ugh. This froze up. Ugh. Oh God, nope. That's froze up. All right. Well, that's an indication that there is some corrosion in there. God dang it, that is tight. I got a really good purchase with the JIS screwdriver here too. I cannot break that at all. Let's try this one. Oh my God. Oh, those are so tight. They're froze up. Aha. Otherwise, you'll strip that out and time for the drill. Probably should have done this before. Good. Jesus, how long is this thing? Okay, that's the main switch and throttle. It's okay, we don't need that right now. Well, of course, I can't get at the wires. Jeez. I'm gonna have to find the next plug somewhere and, and tap into it because I'm thinking it's this switch. This is gonna be a real, I gotta test it before I take it apart. I'm not gonna take all that apart without testing it. Well, I went in doubt, read the instructions. <laughs> anyway, I figured I'd go ninja on it because I gotta pull this fuel tank anyway, which comes right out when you take the four bolts out that go into these uh, speed clips that hold that floor down, I guess. And then I can get it, uh, you know, tracing these wires, which do go straight back and into uh, this connector right here. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just pulling this connector apart and see, see if I can isolate the uh, I'm gonna disconnect the battery though, just in case there's any funny business going on here. And uh, we'll uh, just be safe. Cause I wanna check continuity. I'm not really concerned about checking power right now. We gotta check that switch. Probably took this, probably took that apart for nothing, but uh, you know, hey, it's, I'm going learning as I go on this. Cause uh, I said, I'll, I'll work on these things. CT70, CT90s and stuff, they are completely different than this thing because they don't have ECUs or ECMs. And uh, I'm glad they don't because that's a real pain in the ass. All this electronic garbage. And I doubt that's the problem because we got sparked. There's something going on in the start circuit itself. Supposed to be a yellow and a green and a green with a yellow coming off of that. So I've got it in two different harnesses here. There's a green with a yellow here green with a yellow in this harness and then there is a yellow with a green in that harness right there. Um, I should be able to get continuity between those two if I'm reading this right when I unplug them. Go between the two and then hit the switch and I should get continuity. If I don't then I definitely have a problem in the switch up there. If you see one of these type plugs that are weather packs style and it is you can see that gasket in there these are almost always sensitive electronics so um, that's why I disconnect the battery and uh, gonna isolate the circuit. As I explained before, because uh, I don't wanna screw up the ECM, assuming it's not screwed up already. All right, I'm a dummy. I thought that was a green for the yellow. That's actually a blue, so doy. Actually, both of them are right in this one, which makes more sense. Yellow with a green, green with the yellow. So that's the two we'll check. The unhooking this didn't do anything, but it didn't help us. Now I think the best way to check these kind of nine pins you know, the non-weather pack ones is a front probe them and just use a terminal that's designed to go in there. This is one of these terminals that would be appropriate to crimp on the male side that plugs into that. But that's generally what I do. You can back probe them, but it's very difficult sometimes to get a, a doodad in there. So that's the uh, yellow with the green and Green with the yellow is opposite it, so that kind of makes sense the way these plugs are often set up. And it's just a matter of putting a meter across it, checking for continuity when I press the bouton. So we'll see what happens with that.
So we're, yeah, we're down at 0 0.3, 0 0.2. That's good connection through that. So yeah, I didn't need to take it out, <laughs> but it's easy to put back. So there is no problem in our, in our start switch. So uh, now we got to figure out why this is not cranking. I, I, like I said, I'm pretty sure I ruled out any interlocks or anything because I got spark. I explained before I tested that. I do not know why I do not have crank. The starter and alternator on this is a combined unit. You know, with the mileage and age of this thing, you know, it's it's older, but you know, it doesn't have much mileage on it. I forgot what it is exactly, but it's pretty low. I would really doubt on you that um, there is a problem with <coughs> that particular piece of equipment. God, those are tough sometimes. All right, let's get this ECU one back in. And, you know, they put these condoms over them here, and God, they're a pain in the ass. It's only going to go one way anyway. It's not bi-electrical. <laughs> okay, folks, who are probably screaming at the screen if they know these scooters way better than I do, I figured out the problem. <laughs> and it was a, it's a dummy mistake, but like I said, I am not, well, I'm, let me back up. I am partially right, all right, but let me show you the real reason. Here is the wiring diagram. Here's your engine stop and start switch. Of course, this side over on the right is the kill switch, you know, the rocker switch. You can tell that because this is a momentary, therefore it must be the start because it's a push to start, you know. So, now remember I said the yellow and the green and the green with the yellow. Well, the yellow with the green goes straight back and goes into um, uh, the uh, ECM. And I checked all his wires and they were good. So then I traced the other one and I kind of misread it before. I thought it went to the ECM as well, but it does not. I traced it wrong. And what it does is it goes down here. I don't know if you, where's my damn cursor? Here we go. <laughs> it goes down here and the green with the yellow goes out to what? What? Right front brake lever switch. As soon as I saw that, because I retraced it, and when you gotta be crapping me, that's got a brake on interlock before it'll crank. Just like some motorcycles have a clutch pull interlock, which I'm completely familiar with. But this one don't have that. This is, I think that's the other rear brake. Oh, that's the front brake, I'm sorry. So one's the rear, I guess, one's the front, I don't know. But, you know, I'm used to the clutch one on the left handlebar of a motorcycle. If it doesn't crank and everything's on, I go right to that. And, and I wire tie it down and starts to crank. Like I said, I'm not 100% familiar with these things, so I'm a dummy, but I am partially right. Let me show you what I mean by that. All right, so turn it on and I hold the uh, brake and I hit this. Sometimes it wants to go, see? So the switch is a problem. So I wasn't completely off on that. So this wasn't for not taking this apart. I'll have to clean that switch or lubricate it or use something to make a better connection. I don't want to crank it too much because it's got, you know, gas from the 1950s in it. So what I want to do is um, just, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that the damn thing would, you know, crank, that, uh, you know, everything electrical was good before I mess with it. And dumb mistake, oversight. I did look for an owner's manual online there, but I couldn't find an owner's manual because I was like, well, what's the procedure for starting a damn thing? That probably would have told me a lot. So I'm like, well, hmm, let me, uh, let me take, make a complete fool out of myself. But it's a learning, learning experience. And, and I did some wire tracing on it. Now I better understand how the thing works. Uh, but uh, yeah, pre pretty stupid, I, I agree. But uh, like I said, if it was a regular motorcycle and I hit that switch, and nothing happened when everything else was on, I'd immediately gone to that clutch lever, pulled the clutch lever in, and it would have cranked most likely because that's an interlock. I'm not used to an inter interlock being a brake, um, but I imagine, I don't know what they were thinking, you know, what, what's it gonna do, you know, where's it gonna go? So maybe they're afraid some kid's gonna get on it and go smoking down the road or something if they started, you know, not knowing what the hell they're doing, but yeah, so I am partially right. The switch is a problem because it's click, 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 the starter relay, and it's it's um, inconsistent. 
I don't want to crank it again too much because I know we got carbon fuel system problems. All right, so yeah, that's where I'm at. Dummy. All right, well, this is gonna close it out for this video. Uh, what we'll do is we'll break it up into some parts and I'll film uh, some footage for uh, the fuel system and then get that up separately. Um, you know, I don't know everything there is to know about everything, of course, so I don't mind putting this stuff up. Whoops, there goes the tripod. I don't mind putting stuff up where I make a couple of mistakes because maybe somebody will watch it and not make the same mistakes. But, you know, we, I did some basic wire tracing and I showed you what that was on the uh, wiring diagram. And I showed you how we isolated the switch at the plug and ruled out at least at that slice in time when I pushed it that it was good. Again, when I wiggle the switch around, it'll intermittently hit the starter relay, and so that switch is a problem. All right, so uh, next video on this will be, uh, again, the fuel system stuff, and uh, we'll see if we can get it to fire up. I could squirt some, I could do a musty one and squirt some good fuel down into the cylinder and then just see if it'll pop on me, but I'm quite certain it's going to because it's got really good spark, so it's kind of a a useless um, procedure and you know I don't want to squirt any raw gas down in there because you know who knows how long since this thing's been run and you know could be 15 16 years and uh, you know just cranking it around hopefully is going to start lubricating the cylinders I will probably squirt some before I do any more cranking on I'll probably squirt some fogging oil down in there make sure the rings are all good and lubricated and just let it smoke it off when it does fire Speaking of fired, I'm going to go ahead and fire myself for uh, not, you know, for making such a dumb mistake. So, but it is a learning experience and hey, that's the way it is. So, all right. Um, I guess that closes it out. I just want to say thanks for watching anybody that is watching. Um, I encourage you to like and subscribe, of course, just like all the other creators do when they're panhandling for both of those. <laughs> so until the next video comes around, I'm going to go panhandle for some more information and maybe even and handle for a little bit of lunch because it's that time folks and it's time for me to shut up and turn the camera off thanks for watching we'll catch you next time